Hey guys, Jim Desias here, tying another fly, one of my favorite backcountry flies. This is the fly here. That's a reminder to have me do my push-ups. Push-up app. <laughs> so it's a chartreuse diver. Here's one I tie for peacock bass. It's got a little bit different tail. But uh, basically just a deer hair diver and chartreuse. So let's get started. Okay, we're gonna get started here. This is um, just flat waxed thread. Put up a little bit of a base here. And I'm gonna use a, uh, a loop that goes behind the back bend of the hook, so it's just monofilament. Uh, looks like about 30 pound test or so. And what that loop does, some people call it a snarfle. I have no idea where that name came from, but Mr. Snarfle, maybe. Legendary fly tire with Theory Gordon. Um, so, this basically what it does is it keeps the, the tail of the fly from fouling around the, the hook point when you cast it. Okay, next step to tie in the tail. Um, it's kind of a fine line between the tail being too long and too short. You don't want to have it uh, too long because it, it has a tendency to foul around the hook and too short just doesn't give it enough action. So I'm going to do about, uh, looks like about two hook lengths. And by the way, when I fish, I typically carry a pair of scissors in my vest or in my chest pack and just if you need to trim the, the tail you know on the water it's no problem you can trim the head too to make the fly deep dive deeper um, so it's just a good tool to have it's a pair of scissors okay next step just tie in some crystal flash really any color will do I'm using silver here but uh, any any just little touch of flash in there helps the fly I think Okay, next step is some cross-cut chartreuse zonker strip. So, and just when I use zonkers, if you cut it on an angle like that for the tail and for the for the body, it just it ties in easier. There's just a little tip there, and for the tail, it it, uh, it gives it better action and it's less likely to foul. So tie that in there. Gonna wrap that forward. This is actually be a pretty good fly, just as is. I mean, this would definitely work for snook and tarpon and many other fish that eat minnows and especially in the Everglades, but really anywhere. Probably work for smallmouth. Um, but I'm going to put a, a deer hair head on it just to make it dive a bit and to um, push some water, which is really important with these backcountry fish. They, they have strong lateral lines, so uh, any, any fly they can see but also feel is, is uh, you know, typically a better fly. I'm going to add some uh, this laser dub. It's uh, chartreuse, as you can see, but it's, it's got some flash in it built in. Just going to tie in a little bit of that on the, on the top and also on the bottom. Just to give it a little bit, a little bit more body plus uh, some flash built in. Okay, I had to stop and charge my battery there a little bit. So I'm using a bright yellow. Okay, uh, in order to pack this hair back to get it you know, tightly bunched together so it floats well. Um, you want to pack it. It doesn't fit, but what you can do is just take a pen 
there's a front part of the pen and just use it to push it back. Of course you want to support everything with your left hand if you're left if you're right-handed work that deer hair back. You don't want everything to slide off the bend of the hook so pushing it back, compacting it and then go to the next hank of, of hair, deer hair. Okay here's the next, next bunch of deer hair just again it's yellow, bright yellow. Just wrapping in the middle, pulling, it flares, a couple wraps, push it back, you can use this pen again. Okay, um, when you're spinning deer hair, it's it's important to, to do it on a bare hook. So there shouldn't be any thread there, it should just be the bare metal of the hook. And just you'll see it as it as you tighten the, the wrap, the first couple wraps, it just spins and then if you release it it'll turn around the hook like that. That's what you want. Push it back. A couple wraps in front. I'm gonna do one more bundle. Okay, just gonna whip finish now. Okay, so there's the fly. Tom I'm gonna uh, wait till tomorrow. It's nighttime. I'm gonna wait till tomorrow and trim it outside because it, is, <laughs> whenever you're trimming deer hair, it is a real mess. So that that looks that's what it looks like without the haircut. So. We'll, get back to you here tomorrow. This is how I trim this fly. Usually from back to front. Trim it flat on the bottom, open up that hook gap. about it.